Electrolyte replenishment is as important as calories and fluids. It's probably the most confusing, misunderstood, and botched up subject on the topic of fueling. Don't rely on salt tablets to fill electrolyte requirements. I am not discounting the, the necessity of sodium. What I am saying is that if sodium were the only you know, card in the game, we could just take salt tablets and we'd be good to go. But all of the electrolytic minerals work together synergistically. So we're talking sodium, chloride, calcium, magnesium, potassium. There's some other cofactors that work with minerals like manganese, vitamin B6. But salt alone just doesn't cut it. You need all of the electrolytic minerals working together to maintain the optimal performance of a lot of important bodily functions. The reason why you take an electrolyte supplement is not so much to prevent bad things like cramping from happening. Of course you don't want cramping to happen. But the real reason why you take an electrolyte supplement or why you replenish electrolytes during exercise is because a lot of important bodily functions, their optimal performance, at least to some degree, is dependent on having adequate supplies of these electrolytic minerals. I mean, your cardiovascular system, your digestive system, uh, your central nervous system, and obviously your muscular system their optimal performance is dependent at least to some degree on having a regular supply of all of the electrolytic minerals. The message is that sodium is an important mineral but we consume far too much of it and our body is very adept at storing it. When you start your workout or race you will start with a minimum of 8,000 milligrams of sodium on board. Yes, during the first part of your workout or race, you're going to lose a lot of sodium, maybe up to two or three grams. But fortunately, the body has a survival mechanism built in that understands this. And it involves a hormone called aldosterone. Aldosterone's basic function is to, mod is to monitor sodium levels in the blood, and when it senses that the losses from sodium, from perspiration, sweat, whatever, urination, are becoming too great through a very complex set of mechanisms. It recirculates its stores of sodium back into the bloodstream via the kidneys. Now, it can't do this forever, obviously. It's going to need some sodium and replenishment. But your body has, the point is, is that your body recognizes that it's losing sodium. And it has a built-in mechanism that helps monitor recirculate and thus conserve its sodium stores. You want to screw that up? Here's how you do it. Overdo it on the sodium. And it's going to be different for everyone. And again, different conditions require different amounts. Uh, when you take in too much sodium, you turn the switch off on aldosterone and it just says, I'm going away now. You just, you know, nighty night time. Another hormone called vasopressin, the antidiuretic hormone kicks in and that causes the body to retain fluids. It forces the body to excrete more sodium out of perspiration, so you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot by taking in excess amounts of sodium, and you're also causing another hormone uh, to predominate that will cause your body to retain fluids. So just like I did in my first race across America, if you have ever seen or have experienced yourself finishing a long workout or a race, where everything is puffed up. Your f fingers down to your wrist, your face, cheeks, your ankles, your feet, chances are you overdid it on the sodium. Sodium alone does not work. Too much sodium is as, ba is as bad as not enough. You will really screw things up by too much sodium. So how much is enough? Well, it's different for everybody. I wish I could give you a one size all fits, you know, one size fits all amount. But there are so many variables that come into place. Mainly your body size, your body mass index, the weather outside, how well or poorly you're acclimated to it, your fitness level. Did you know that the fitter you become, you get about 50% more efficient at conserving your sodium stores? You get way better at burning fat. So early season, you'll probably lose more sodium than you will You know during uh, mid-season peak fitness. You know, what I need at 8 o'clock in the morning when it's cool is a heck of a lot lower than what I need at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So 
all of these variables plus biological predisposition I mean I, I know some people who are just heavy sweaters they lose a lot of sweat no matter what they do they will cramp unless they're taking adequate amounts of all the minerals but in general for most people most of the time in a nice mix uh, a full spectrum of all the electrolytic minerals we believe 100 to 600 milligrams of sodium per hour along with all the other minerals works really nicely.